Hey everyone, it's Alexander, the real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel, and this is my review for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, uh, which is not only a sequel to 2016's Doctor Strange, but is also a sequel to WandaVision and Spider-Man No Way Home. The movie takes place just a few months after Stephen Strange's first experience with the multiverse in Spider-Man No Way Home. At the beginning of this particular movie, Stephen Strange encounters a mysterious teenager named America Chavez, who has the power to travel between different universes, but the problem is that evil forces are after her powers. So in order to try to help this girl, Stephen Strange enlists the help of Wanda Maximoff, who we last saw in WandaVision after she uncontrollably took an entire New Jersey town hostage, but she made things right. I don't want to go into any other plot details beyond that, otherwise I'd be spoiling aspects of the movie. But let's just say that when you're dealing with the multiverse, things can really get out of hand, especially when you have the director of Evil Dead and Drag Me to Hell at the helm. Out of all the movies that were announced in Marvel's Phase 4, I mean, Spider-Man No Way Home was probably the most anticipated, but I'd say second in line is this movie right here. Even before Sam Raimi was announced to be the director, and when Scott Derrickson was supposed to direct it, there was a lot of anticipation surrounding it. And this also might be the longest gap for one certain character to get an actual sequel to their film, because the first Doctor Strange came out in 2016, six years ago, and unless Marvel makes another standalone Hulk movie, in the future, this might be the longest gap we see for a character to get a sequel. But of course, Stephen Strange has had a prominent role in between these two films. He was in the last two Avengers movies. He had a significant part in What If, or at least a variant of him did. He was just in Spider-Man No Way Home. And now we have this movie right here. And plus, the addition of Elizabeth Olsen after coming off of WandaVision definitely added some more anticipation for this film. And I gotta say, there's a lot about this movie that I liked, and then a good handful of stuff that I really didn't like. I wish I could have loved this movie at the end of the day because it's got a great visual look. I thought the first Doctor Strange had a really good look to it as well and was really trippy, but considering Sam Raimi's style that you see from the Evil Dead movies and his Spider-Man movies, uh, he seemed like the perfect fit for Doctor Strange. And this movie has an incredible visual look. Uh, it's more weird than the first movie. I'd say it's more colorful, more vibrant than the first movie. It's got more of a horror vibe this time around with a lot of really intense scenes scenes and creepy imagery overall. It just seems like Sam Raimi was perfect for Doctor Strange more than he ever was for Spider-Man. Because Doctor Strange has always seemed more weird and bizarre than Spider-Man ever could be. And when you take a look at his Evil Dead movies, those films just scream weird, especially with his really inventive camera tricks, which he does utilize in this movie. It is hands down a Sam Raimi film, right down to Bruce Campbell being in this movie somewhere. One thing that surprised me was how short this movie was. It's just a little over two hours. With a movie like this, I expected it to be two and a half, but it's much shorter than that, which is both a positive and a negative. It's a positive because this movie doesn't waste any time getting into the actual plot of the movie, and it's never boring. There's always something happening, whether it's a great character moment, whether it's some really cool imagery, whether it's action scenes, it's non-stop and there's never a part in the movie that I can recall that made me bored. All that being said though, there's a lot of elements that this movie introduces that I don't think get fleshed out enough, especially when you're dealing with a concept as grand as the multiverse. We probably could have used maybe like 10 minutes more of this movie. But uh, yeah, I wasn't entirely bothered by the fact that this movie wasn't two and a half hours. Uh, considering that the last two MCU movies were that length, it's nice to get something a little shorter. The actors do a really good job. Once again, Benedict Cumberbatch has really come a long way as Stephen Strange the more he's played this character. I remember all the way back in the first movie how I was thrown off by his American accent. And there were a lot of moments in that movie where he was kind of mumbling. But he certainly progressed with the amount of times he's played this character. Elizabeth Olsen once again does a killer job as Wanda Maximoff, who is now known as the Scarlet Witch by this point. And she has some great 
scene stealing scenes that uh, really goes to show you that she is one of the big powerhouses of this series now that both Tony Stark and Steve Rogers are gone. We also have Benedict Wong back as Wong. He's good. Christine Palmer, once again played by Rachel McAdams, does a good job as well and we get to see a little more of the relationship between her and Strange, which I won't say anymore, otherwise I'd be spoiling aspects of the movie. The newest addition to this movie is Soshi Gomez, who plays America Chavez. America Chavez was a character that I literally knew nothing about. Like, whenever I see this character in the comics, I thought to myself, is she like a Captain America? That's my idiot brain thinking that because, oh, America's her first name, so of course that's got to be the connection there. So I didn't know what her powers were, I didn't know what role she was going to play in this movie, and she is the main focus of the film. And I actually ended up liking this character quite a bit, and I can't wait to see what she does further along. And now we get to the bad parts of the movie, and the stuff that left me disappointed. Uh, Wanda Maximoff was a aspect of this movie that I was let down by. I won't go into too much detail, but her motivations and why she's doing the things that she's doing kind of are disservice to her character. And I'm not gonna say that it ruins Wanda Maximoff, but considering what we saw this character go through with WandaVision and where she ended up by the end of that series, I was a little let down with what they decided to do with her in this particular movie. Especially by the time we got to the end of the film, I just was confused a little bummed out and wondering what's going to happen afterwards. And I think a lot of the issues with how Wanda was handled was not so much within Sam Raimi's direction as much as it was a problem with the script, which is not the best. It wasn't hard to keep track of all the multiversal stuff like so many other people have been saying. It was actually pretty easy to follow, but I just felt like it was a little sloppy and this was one of the aspects about this movie being as short as it is, is that there really isn't a whole lot of time to flesh out certain aspects with either concepts of the multiverse or character motivations. So yeah, it was, it was kind of a mess. And also, this is a criticism that I think will only apply to those who aren't hardcore MCU fans, but this is the first movie in the series where you really start to see the big crossovers between the films and the Disney Plus series. So if you only watch the movies and you have not watched WandaVision or What If, then uh, this is not the movie for you. You are not going to be able to catch up with what is going on in this movie and you'll be flat out confused in certain aspects. But again, that doesn't apply for everyone. If you're a hardcore MCU fan like me and you've watched everything, then that's not an issue at all. At the end of the day, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was good. It certainly had a lot of disappointing elements and I wanted to love this movie because it's the MCU, it's Sam Raimi, I've really grown to love the character of Stephen Strange. So there were aspects about it that I felt really let down by. I do plan on seeing it again at some point. I won't be doing a spoiler review, but I'll be doing a live watch party when this movie comes out on Blu-ray. But as for now, with a rating, I'd say it's good, but not great. I think the positives outweigh the negatives, but the negative aspects are very, they're very noticeable and they're hard to just brush to the side. And in terms of this being an actual horror movie, it's a horror movie by superhero standards. Obviously Sam Raimi couldn't go full R like he does with Evil Dead, but uh, if we're just talking about superhero movies that are within the horror genre or try to be horror movies, take that Morbius and you mutants. This is how you do a superhero movie that's a horror film as well. I enjoyed it. I imagine it's going to be a pretty divisive movie at the end of the day, but you know, Marvel does have a track record of fixing things that people have issues with, so we'll see what they do in the future. And I hope Sam Raimi sticks around. I hope he makes Doctor Strange 3 because he is so perfect for this character. And there you go, that's my review for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I hope you enjoyed it. And now I wanna know what you guys think about the movie. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only 
one. Hello everyone, I just wanted to say thank you all for watching my review for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go check out my Twitch channel, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, and take care of yourselves.